I am Ivana Williams, and this is... I'm Ashley Dada jones from History Channel Swamp People. And we're here just to talk about our organization that we started about a year ago. It's called Sippy Girls. And so basically, me and Ashley have teamed up to try to build this community of women across Mississippi and hopefully across the nation after that for women to be able to get outdoors and not only for us to get outdoors, but we have that camaraderie amongst each other and then build that network and teamwork with young girls to get them outdoors. But um, yeah, this is our second episode and last time it was, everything was completely new. So we learned a little bit and as we continue this process, we'll be a little more professional each time. We probably will have a few hiccups, but that's to be expected with two women that think off the top of our heads. So, Ashley. Have you ever heard, um, they say, what is a redhead waiting in line behind a blonde? Uh-uh. Learning. Uh-huh. Isn't that mean? <laughs> so, I do get the blonde jokes sometimes. Oh, so, I, speaking of that, I had somebody I was talking to today. And he's, like, telling me, loved our podcast. And he's like, oh, I, I adore Ashley. She's like a blonde redhead. Oh, gosh, he just affirmed what I just told you. (laughs) So I thought that was pretty funny. So on our first episode, what, how did you think that went? I just know from what it felt like when we left, I didn't go back and listen to it. I've gotten a lot of good feedback. Yeah. But it's just something about listening to my own voice or especially watching myself on TV. I just try not to, but I always enjoy talking with you, so it just feels like a good conversation with you. Yeah, I mean, even after the podcast was over, we're just continuing to talk, and we're like, okay, we got to go. We got, you know, other (laughs) things to do. We could talk about stuff all day. So I know what you mean by the whole voice. I don't like hearing my voice. So at work, whenever I got a key up on the radio, then I will make a deeper voice on purpose. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's probably silly, but and I don't know if anybody else notices it, but I actually do that. Yeah. And I try to subconsciously not I mean I try to consciously not do that. Well, I, I don't want to sound like a little girl. Like I I work with all men and so I just I I will. I'll put on the ready. Now they're going to start listening. Are you to trying it. to sound like a guy or what not is Not sound like a guy, but not sound like a 12-year-old little girl, you know? I think it's that I'm trying to, like, get as comfortable as I can in my own voice. And so it's more comfortable to be deeper. Mm -hmm. I have to try harder if it's high pitch. Oh, so you're the opposite. Yeah. Oh. Well, I mean, I already have naturally a, I feel like a masculine voice. A little bit, right? But, like I said, I'll just get my little radio and I'll be like, C32, Jackson. (laughs) (laughs) So, I, yeah, I try to. Because I, I don't know. I don't want them thinking like, oh, she can't do anything because of that little petite little voice. Pip you know? squeak yeah, voice, yeah. yeah. So I try to sound cooler and all that. And then sometimes when I'm trying to get off the phone with somebody, like I want them to know what I'm doing, like for a living. Sometimes if I, if I don't know that. <laughs> so I will. Like, hang on, I got to go write a ticket. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not doing anything. Let me go. Ca- I'm, I'll be back. I got to go catch a gator. Yeah, yeah. You should tr- you should try it. I don't get people off the phone. That'll probably want to keep you on the phone though. Oh uh, well, it has it has happened sometimes. I'm like I gotta go. Anybody that's in law enforcement like me and doing the job I do, being a patrolman, and primarily uh, our focus is on writing citations. And so, whenever I say I gotta go, like everybody knows what that means. They they hang up. And I saw some um, wife. Of a coworker of mine, she's like, I know what it means when they say I gotta go. So, anyway, um, well, y'all aren't really in a position to just lollygag or you know with a jibber jabber. You have no time for that. Like, if you gotta go, you really gotta go. Well, it's one of those. Uh, you have as much time as you would like. Just every once in a while, if something just comes up, like I can be talking to you. And have my radio on and full on conversation with you. And all of a sudden I hear my badge number be called out. I can hang on. I got it. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, it's weird. It's like a mother can hear her own child. Like you have a whole bunch of kids at the pool saying mama, you know, and you, but you know, which one is yours whenever you hear that mama. Have you ever done, 
Like no, I know exactly what you mean. It's like it really puts a whole new meaning to your calling. You mm-hmm. know, it's like that that's your calling. Like, you know, that's what you do. That's it's not who you are. Yeah. But it is what you do. Yeah. I mean, I love my job. What what made you want to go into law enforcement? I mean, that's a pretty bold decision. Um, so whenever I was eighteen, I graduated from Pearl High School and then went to Mississippi Delta Community College. It's a college in Moorhead and and I don't know if I should say this, but the mascot is Trojans. I just thought that was kind of funny. Wow, where is this school? <laughs> it's um uh, in close to Indianola, but it's in the Delta. And so it's in the city of Moorhead. I guess it's a city. And in Mississippi Delta Community College, their mascot is called the Trojans. Perfect, I guess, for the city. And um, I went out there, play soccer. And while I was out there, they had a police academy there. Are you getting the joke now? <laughs> You're getting the joke No, now. I've gotten it the whole time. <laughs> I'm just trying to hold back my laugh. And it's my face red. It's just a little bit. I, I, was, I didn't know if you got the joke or not. All right, so I was out there for soccer, and they had academy, police academy at the, on campus. And um, I got to see w- what it was like to kind of go see what they were doing with training while I was doing stuff for soccer, and it just sparked my interest. So the next year I ended up going to Mississippi College and playing soccer over there, and I started taking classes for criminal justice, and it just, well, it was an easy A, so I, t- I continue to take it, but I enjoyed it. And so whenever I turned 21, graduated, I was working at Mississippi College as a dispatcher. You know, they have like a public service department. So pu- public safety department, that's what it was. So all the guys were like, oh, you graduated. You know, what are you going to do with your career? And I'm like, I, you know, I want to do sports marketing. And we live in Mississippi, so there's not a whole lot of sports marketing jobs out there. And I couldn't find anything, and all the guys were like, well, you know, this agency is hiring, and I don't, I don't want to mention the agency because, you know, I'm, I'm not here on their behalf, but I wanted to go to that agency, and I was like, well, what is that, you know? And they were telling me how hard the academy is and how very few women get in, and let alone make it through. And they were saying even Marines can't make it. And I was like, okay, I can do this. So, so do you have to go and qualify for the police academy, or mm-hmm. do you have to be asked? Well, for that one, yes. You had to go through, like, a whole six-month hiring process. And I ended up getting the application and asking my husband at the time, you know, what do you think about me applying for this job? And he's like, oh, I don't care. He's How old were you at this time? I was 21, 22, somewhere in there. Okay, so how many children did you have then? One. One. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I asked him, and he kind of sat back. He's like, I don't care. You're not going to make it. So, I'm stubborn. (laughs) Danny's over here, like, so shocked. Does it help when people say that you won't be able to do it? You know, I don't know what they all, you know, say about redheads, but most redheads are firecrackers right oh yeah all right i I don't really want to say i'm a firecracker by any means but if you tell me i can't do something i'm gonna prove you wrong well that's a firecracker i have i have golden blonde this not my real hair color okay (laughs) well it just feels like the more people that you know can't do it or aren't capable of doing it the more it makes me want to do it for people who can't want to do it that really do want to do it you know, and so when somebody tells me I can't do something, that's just like fuel. Well, I'll cut what I'm saying. We'll get back into that. But what about you? I mean, you go gator hunt all the time. Like, well, how did you, what made them, what made you separate from all the other people that would have loved to be on Swamp People? Well, I know that there's a lot of people out there like me out there hunting. There may not be as many women, but definitely as many dedicated hunters and hard workers but um I'll say this and I tell this to usually everybody that asks this general question you know it's just what set me aside really was I was standing there with one of the main producers and I had gone so completely out of my comfort zone I woke up that morning and I was so nervous 
And so naturally when you're nervous, you kind of want to just, you know, you want to hide. You want to, you know, have a mask on basically. You know, you don't want everybody else to see how nervous you are. I don't anyways. And so I got up and I curled my hair and I just wanted these people to think that, you know, I was capable of handling such a big job. But when I get there, I'm realizing like, okay, I'm sitting here in a dress and my hair's fixed and the the man that was interviewing me said that he was the show runner. Mm-hmm. And I thought that he meant he ran the errands. <laughs> like he was yeah. the runner for the yeah. show because I worked in a law firm and that is what we call the personal assistants is the runners. And so talk about a blind moment. Um, he says, you know, I, I, after talking to you, believe you're capable of doing this, but I'm not going to be able to convince five women in at the network that you're capable of doing this. And um, I basically was like, okay, hold on, wait a minute. Let me, let me go be myself. And so I went out to the truck and I had brought a change of clothes that I was going to wear to be more comfortable. And I went into the gas station bathroom basically and washed my face with the harshest soap ever. But I took off all my makeup and I put my hair in a ponytail and I threw on a ball cap. And that was such a monumental moment in my life that I didn't even realize. Mm -hmm. And I got that job because I was myself. Right. And I went back and, you know, I've proven that I can handle it and I can do it. But I think that that was something that really stuck out. Because I'm sure that there were a lot of people trying to be on the show and still are. Right. You know, it's it's something to be in the public spot, you know, but or in the public eye. But um, I know that he he thought a lot of it. And it just goes to show that if you go and be yourself and you put yourself out there, a lot of times it gets you a lot further. I agree. Um, I will say another little funny thing. So I saw a little meme about um is it baby yoda i don't i i saw it and whenever i see a meme i think it's funny i'll save it (laughs) and then send it to people and it said uh just be yourself when it comes to work and then baby yoda said why so i can get fired (laughs) (laughs) so i love it i am goofy when it comes to that well thankfully i'm only on the boat you know with a few select people so i'm not in the public I'm sure I would have to be a little more Cautious. contained. I mean, especially, I'm sure that that's so hard for you because yeah. people are constantly looking at you. Yeah, well, it's it's strange, you know, and this is something that we need to talk about whenever we go and meet the new members of Sippy Girls is they're putting themselves out there, right? And you got to have a lot of confidence and be secure in yourself to be able to do that. Like both you and I are used to that. Because we get a lot of scrutiny um, being females in our jobs and what we do and being in the spotlight. And I know for me, I have to watch everything I say and do and post and, you know, like even a bathing suit. Because I do work with primarily men that they think it's inappropriate, you know, for a female to be on the beach and in a bathing suit, (laughs) you know. And something that most people don't even think about. And so I have to constantly remind myself okay well even though it's not inappropriate it's still I have a job I've got to do and I don't want to hinder myself from succeeding in that career so if I don't post a picture of me in a bathing suit oh well you know I actually have a funny little thing too that probably nobody else would notice but you but since you mentioned it I'm gonna bring it up I wore a shirt on the you know, the first year you're picking out what you're going to wear and you want to kind of wear the same thing just to make a overall better production. And I did not think about bending over out of the boat to oh, yeah. shoot gators and do all that in the motion. So just doing my job and not trying to do anything extra, it was like, wow, that's something, you know, I really have to go back and rethink. So I wear yeah. more clothing, but just not thinking about, you know, just... On looking in the mirror, it was like, okay, yeah, this looks it's probably fine. Not. I wasn't trying to be overly... No, I mean, not... It's probably, like, hot outside. I'm sure you were yeah. hot, too. Yeah. Like, you're looking good and all that, but... <laughs> yeah, I get but, what you mean. <laughs> um, but, I mean, that's probably what you were thinking. is like, oh, it's hot. I'm not going to wear some, you know, thick T-shirt. So, tank top probably... 
was the best avenue. But yeah, I've I've heard a lot of before I met you, and then once I had met you, you know, some of my friends were like, "Oh, you know Ashley?" I'm like, "Yeah, I just met her." Oh, she she needs to wear those tank tops more often. I'm like, okay. I know. And it's like people think that since you are putting yourself out there and, you know, when we're just on social media, that's what everybody is doing. That's the goal. And it feels like people think that they can make comments or judge just because you are putting yourself out there. So those, the girls, the new members that we have, you know, definitely is something that we need to constantly be reminding them to be conscious of. Right. And I mean, it's only been a little time that they've actually been members, but they've already told me that people are starting to like send them stuff in their inbox, you know, how attractive they are and all that. And not only for the married members, but for the ones who are single being in that spotlight and you're not being, you know, you're not used to it. It could either go to your head or you might get the wrong, you know, ideal behind it that these people really care about you. And, you know, we're not much older than most of the girls. I mean, it might be a 10-year gap. And eventually we'll get, old, you know, it will be a larger gap. You know? Lord willing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But for the younger girls, I mean, they still don't realize that these people are just, they see them getting more attention and they're going to try to latch on. And that's what a lot of people do with, I'm sure, you being on TV. And for me, it's being, you know, everybody wants somebody in law enforcement be their friend you know just in case they get that ticket they have somebody to call and so I know that's what it is I know as soon as I take off that badge and that uniform I'm not going to get those phone calls anymore and I'm okay with it because I already know what they're doing you know and I'm sure you do too but that's definitely something we need to harp on to the ladies and we already have like a code of conduct for them to like don't use profanity on social media. Don't, you know, post about any alcohol or anything. Not that they can't drink. Not that that's a bad thing. It's just that we don't want to, like, promote it, per yeah. se. And then, you know, just be mindful of who's watching. And that's something that they got to talk to their spouses or their significant other about is that, are you okay with me going on a podcast? Because I'm sure we'll have some members over here eventually on the podcast with us and, I don't want to just invite anybody if they're not okay with it, you know? And not only just from them, but then, you know, their sit- situation at home, either boyfriend, husband, whatever it might be. Yeah. Because, like, for me, um, and I don't want to say, let me take it back with my ex-husband all that. Yeah, he said that at first. He did. I was 21, 22. And then um, I ended up, I didn't get in the first time, and at that time our those academies were every three years. So, I ended up starting at Madison PD, and over seven years, finally got into this academy. So I went to a basic academy, made it through, and it must be Law Enforcement Officer Training Academy. So it's short for Melota. Or, yeah. And I uh, made it through that. And so afterwards, he always said, well, if you can make it through that, you can make it through anything. So... Yeah, at first, that was the initial, like, oh, okay, well, watch and see. But he did end up supporting me later on. But um, it just didn't it didn't work out because that whole situation, like, we didn't see eye to eye when it came to social media is what I was trying to get at is, you know, I thought it was okay for me to post stuff because I wanted to open a business. And today you have to use social media to have a platform for anything. And he just didn't get it. And, you know, that was one of the issues we had. But... That's why I want those girls to not go through what I had to go through, you know, like talk it out, make sure both of you guys agree with it. Otherwise, like if it's not okay, you can still be a part of the organization. Just you might not be on the podcast or the TV show. Yeah. Social media can be a really great thing, but it can be detrimental if you're know you not careful. So I've seen, though, that you're doing really good with your social media. So do you like I I like keeping up with it because, you know, really we get some some weird messages, but there's the ones that, you know, people are reaching out to you and just telling you that they look up to you, telling you that they read a story or they saw you or getting to meet you was the best day of their life. There's a lot of messages that you have to go through, but there's the ones that, you know, just make you feel really good inside to read. So what are your 
pet peeves with those messages or with social media or messages or any anything oh in my gosh biggest pet peeve is there's an automated little thing on facebook mm -hmm. and they can send just where's what's your location are you available to chat and then i don't know it's just these automatic little things and so i'll it looks like I have. Oh, tell tell me more about yourself. Yes, I don't even know how Facebook started that. I so I have to go out of my way to tell you something about me. You just message me, and I'm yeah. supposed to tell you about me. <laughs> well, I use uh, I use Snapchat for uh, the filters, and I have people on there. I don't even know who they are, and I probably do know in person who they are. But I because Snap has different names and all that, I don't even really bother with it other than the filters. But I kind of OCD a little bit and I don't like the little bubbles so I just go in there and like clear it out just so I don't have the bubbles and then people like they'll message me again and they'll get back on and they'll say um, or not oh, because they had messaged me and I didn't oh, respond yeah. and then they're like or not don't talk to me I'm I've got like I it's not I'm not trying to be rude by any means but that's a big pet peeve of mine is like I've got four kids and I've got a full-time job and growing businesses and, you know, having my own social life, you know, and I don't know you. And all you did is say, Hey, what am I, go what am I I'm supposed gonna, to say to, Hey, you know what? I bet you deal with this a lot too. So how many times a day do you think, or just ratio wise, knowing that you own a gun store and you're just in conversation with somebody or probably even more so with just being a law enforcement officer, but that they called to get free advice all day long. But then when it's time to like, actually like with us, yeah. you know, they'll call and see what they need to do for their lawsuit and find out everything that they need to do. Oh, okay. And then when it's time to get down to it and they hire another law firm, it's like, or and then oh the even worse is that when those law firms screw it up yeah. or don't answer their calls just because they turn into another number to those law firms those law right. firms don't care they're just cattle that's another number that's another 10 grand for them or whatever it is and so when those law firms aren't answering or working their cases then they want to call and get us to fix it right it's like that's not how it works yeah i don't think people realize that you know like your husband put a lot of time energy effort money into becoming an attorney you know and working hard to open a business and have his own law firm and people just take it for granted they're like oh well that's a friend of mine like I couldn't imagine being a doctor and having people call you about oh my toe is it's black well, go to the doctor like yeah, go to like the doctor go just to because your trade isn't something like fixing your alternator and you physically being able to do it time's money yeah I mean, I understand, like, a trade. I'm all about that. Horse trading. Is that what it's called? Horse trade? Did you that's just say horse trading? That's what we call it, horse oh. trading. I mean, like, if you have, that's what I call it. You don't call it that? Uh-uh. There's something else. Um, When you, like, it's a barter, I guess. Yeah. You're bartering with them? Is that what it's called? Okay. But I think you can barter with money, too. Horse trading is, like. You have is there is what is horse trading? If it, we're gonna use you to look up horse trading, yeah, and the I've difference that. between that and barter, but but I get what you're saying. Yeah, so like yeah. we've done it before, and I've done it to where I want to get rights to hunt. Mm -hmm. Like there was specifically a lady that had this really good land. It was in prime location, <laughs> and she had a legal battle, and so. My husband's going to always try to do it with just being able to walk somebody through it. And yeah. that's his, like, flaw. Like, if he would, he would he would make a lot more money being, stop being such a nice guy, really. But anyway, if he would have just charged that lady money instead of saying, yeah, y'all could hunt here, we would have been able to buy some land to hunt somewhere. Yeah. You know, and then it's like when everything's worked out at the end, He's All looking up horse trading. Yeah, I want to see. What does it say? Are you going to read it? I mean, it literally says trading horses. <laughs> <laughs> I figured that my parent, my dad just made that up out of thin air. Guarantee it. Hey, well, you know, now we know. <laughs> okay, do not use that as a term anymore. <laughs> okay, retire that. <laughs> That's okay. I can't do phrases. 
You know, like the um, um. See, I can't even think about it. It's like killed two birds with one stone. Is that it? Okay. If I try too hard to say a uh, sentence, yeah, I'm killing twenty birds. <laughs> There's gonna be eight stones at the end. <laughs> I ha- I am horrible at phrases. The typical phrases, I will mess it up, and somebody will look at me like, "Did you really just say that?" I'm like, "I don't I don't know what it's called. Just you know what I'm talking about." And I would just go on, and um, this is going to be a fun podcast. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, okay, so you join the both of us. Yeah. So another thing, a blonde moment, I guess. Do you know where pickles come from? Cucumbers. Do you, did you know that? You I did to not pickle know it. that. I didn't know. Stop. Uh-uh. You can pickle anything. I didn't know. <laughs> no. I didn't know. No. Yeah, it was like two years ago. I was, I was talking to a buddy of mine. He's like, I asked him what he was doing. He's he's like, oh, I'm making pickles. I was like, how how do you make pickles? He's like, are you kidding me? I said, no. What, I mean, how do you make pickles? He's like, it's a cucumber. I was like, oh, I thought pickles just like grew on a vine, you know, you and it's already like, made. No, you you oh, put cute. I love this. In, I love this. <laughs> in case anybody doesn't know, cucumber. You get a cucumber and you put it in a jar, and I guess it's vinegar and, and dill. And, and you can something else. Add anything. Okay. Hot wing sauce. And then you close it and you just like firm firm it. Mm-hmm. it. Yeah. And then it's pickles. I did not know that. In vinegar, right? Yeah. And what yeah. is it? Lots of salt. Lots of salt. Mm-hmm. I mean, I eat pickles too. I just never do. Anyway, so uh, about the podcast, uh, we did one uh, a few days ago and had great people, you know, calling in, telling me like, oh, you did good. I love the podcast. Maybe a few suggestions. I was like, all right, go ahead. I'm I'm open for, you know, constructive criticism. I said that. So he was saying, he's like, well, bring the camera closer to you guys. And so that's what we're we did today. We brought it closer. We're actually doing a, a TikTok live versus a Facebook live. And we'll, we're just kind of experimenting to see which one looks better and, and what works for us better. And then the lighting. So if you guys go back to our Facebook or Ashley's Facebook, Ashley Dead Eye Jones Facebook, you can see the different camera angles and the lighting. And maybe you guys can just let us know what you think, if it's any better, any worse. I don't think it can be worse. <laughs> But it looks good. And then um, the outline. So me and you did an outline last time because we're like, oh, we got this. We talk all the time. Speaking of having this and um, the outline, I skipped through all my other questions that I had to ask you about um, because I'm so curious. This is my outline. I wanted to know, like, okay, so after you went to the police academy and you did it and you – further did later on at a different state agency mm-hmm. after that what kind of support I mean what did support look like for your kids I mean what is a day like far as like scheduling and keeping the kids well let me just kind of take it back just a little bit so whenever I graduated a basic like I have been in and out of law enforcement because I have four kids and so when I first went into basic police academy I had one and I had already been working at Madison for like six months and then before that was a dispatcher for MC Mississippi College and then um so I was in and out of law enforcement every time I have a baby I get out and be like oh I'm not going back you know and I, I pulled my retirement and I ended up after my third son I had I ended up getting my master's in homeland security and all of this was to better my resume for the state agency I work for now. And because that, that was my ultimate goal. I it had more opportunity than a local police department would. More, it was more financially secure, had better retirement. And it was just more of the history behind it is there wasn't a lot of women that got in and made it through. And I'm the type of person that I call myself a minimalist. I don't like a lot of things. I feel like as soon as you die, and I know that sounds morbid, but, like, I, I deal with death a lot, or sometimes. And um, I just know that after you pass away, your family is going to sell everything for pennies mm-hmm. or just give it away or throw it away or whatever, right? You're right. So I'm not focused on making more money. Of course, everybody wants more money, so I'm not saying that. But I didn't get into law enforcement for the money. 
because there isn't any there's not any money there that's a lot like me and doing swamp people i didn't get into doing it for the money and ever since my dad passed away i just have so much more respect for life Mm -hmm. in general and you know what a lot of people think that because you're on tv you you make a lot of money Mm -hmm. and you really don't i Mm -hmm. mean you're only getting paid for the episodes right you can explain that a little bit more yeah i mean we just we don't get paid for being on tv and it's not like you know, we get a script or anything. They just follow us around. We have these tags to fill in. Mm-hmm. I mean, from what we experience to what is shown on the TV, it's like, I mean, they just follow us around and make it into the episodes for TV, but it's it's incredible. They have a really talented group of people, and it's, it's crazy to see all the different parts to come together, but it also, it's hard to work with animals you know (laughs) and that being how you make make or break a Mm -hmm. scene you know is because you really you can't control what they're going to do you know and you want to be as humane as possible as fast as possible you know so there's not any room for extra you know you're going in there getting it done as fast as you can and one thing that I will say is that the difference between you know us filming and what is shown on the television is just a lot of time and it's just we save everybody the time of us just sitting there and you know doing the traveling Mm -hmm. back and forth so that's why it is action-packed but it takes us a lot of time to do that well you know those like cop shows right that would be like six months of filming for one episode or you know one season maybe because i don't go on a chase every two seconds you know, I don't get a phone call all the time. It's it's a lot of like laid back time, but then when it comes down to it, when you are called to something, you got to go. How is it as far as getting into that mindset of, you know, not that anything that we do is the same, and I'm not comparing my job to yours at all, but your job is very dangerous, and one wrong decision can be, you know, or just one thing that you're not looking at you know when I get onto the boat it's like I step into another mindset Mm -hmm. of is there gas in the boat you know like just is there bullets in the gun is the gun on safety is it facing anybody you know got all these camera people standing around and you're you know waving a loaded weapon so there's a lot of things that you step into yeah what does that talk like with yourself well for you I could not imagine what you have to go through just being around like 12 foot gators or you know 10 12 foot whatever you can catch. So I admire you for that. But so for my job, it's something that we're taught in the academy. It's more of, you know, zero to nothing. Or no. Yeah. <laughs> See, I don't know the phrases. It's zero to 60. <laughs> <laughs> so um, zero to 60, right? Like it could be mellow, which in the academy, it's never mellow. So, the, But out on the road, it could be mellow. And then all of a sudden you get a, a call for a wreck, an 18-wheeler on its side, somebody's entrapped, you know, entrapment, on fire, like anything you would think of. And then I even got a call one night of same scenario. And then on top of that, a, a power line was on top of the the truck. So nobody could get to it until the power was, you know, cut off. And it was just crazy. I mean, everybody was fine, you know, thank God. But um, it's one of those that... You still have to train your mind to calm down because you don't know what you're going to see when you get there and you can't just start thinking of everything because even our dispatchers, sometimes they're like, oh, there's there's people everywhere and there's a big bad wreck and you get out there and it's a little fender bender and it was mainly like a lot of family members that are around and they're like... Like hysterical or something. Yeah, over a fender bender. But that that's another thing. Like, um, I'm so used to seeing certain things that a little fender bender like I'll have and I hate to say a girl but most time it is a girl but they'll be crying and I'm like you have you know calm down like I have to be the one that they lean on and whenever we were in the academy they would tell us like oh you're going to be the person that is in charge on that scene right and at first I thought they were just a bunch of egotistical men that were like come on like no this is not we're not anything better than anybody else or you know we're just that's just a job and 
I mean, we're not anything better. But at the same time, he was right pertaining to when we get on scene, everybody's looking for to us for answers. Yeah. yeah. And we've got to be able to say, hey, you go do this, you go do that, and I want, I need this, this, and this. And I'm reading, what did it say? Ice bath helps with learning to keep your cool in different difficult situations. Mm -hmm. We're going to do an ice bath. Well, that's why I was asking, and that's why I think I'm so interested in it, is because I had a situation happen that I was with my son, and so it was, you know, one of those situations where it was extremely dangerous. I didn't know what was going to happen, and I can imagine that that would be the amount of hysteria that you feel like in certain situations sometimes but what it felt like is that it was like an outer body experience and it was like my brain was only calculating where bodies were like where I know this sounds so awful but I think you'll understand but what okay so I'll back all the way up before I get ahead of myself my son and I were launching the boat and I had these two guys come up to us and my son was in another vehicle with his girlfriend and they were trying to take the boat and the truck that I was in. They were going to take just the truck. I was by myself, and I didn't care if they took the boat and my trailer and the boat and truck, whatever, but my son was with me, and I dropped him off on land to go pick the boat up and back the trailer in, and I was going to just drive the boat on, and as soon as I did, those two guys came out of the woods, and I wasn't on land with him, and so I just went into hysteria. I mean, like, panic, really, Mm -hmm. and drove the boat up there and just acted like I didn't know what I was doing, like I couldn't get the boat loaded and that just to keep them from thinking that they could just ambush me until I could explain to my son that he needed to go and get out of there because neither one of us had a phone. Mm -hmm. And um, anyways, so it was like an outer body experience where I was just trying to calculate and not let them get in between me and him. Like I I just almost wanted to say out loud, like, here, take my truck, whatever, go, you almost like want to. So was somebody actually trying to rob you? Yeah, they were. Oh. Yeah, we got out and. What was this? This was about three days after I had my boat. I was just getting like used recently. to. Like recently. Yeah, this oh. was at Brown's Landing. At the Did reservoir. You like call it in? Yeah. Oh. Girl, and it like that's why I was, you know, feeling like how that lady felt with you, you know, when you went up to her and she was crying. I kept my cool and calm through the whole situation, but inside my brain it was your chaos Mm -hmm. because the guy the two people were standing there talking about me and my son like we weren't even there like I couldn't even hear him and I could you know I mean he was like as soon as she gets in the truck or as soon as she gets the boat loaded get in the driver's seat I mean he was having this conversation with the other guy and um I always keep a firearm with me on the boat especially just by myself and unloading and loading just at the boat launches and things like that well when I jumped out of the boat to go tell my son bye you know where I jumped in between the boat and the the pier that the man was standing on and um he said she's got a gun we need to go well that's good that's good though that you had that situational like awareness that you knew something was up and you took care of it you know it was more I think that was more natural instinct like even talking about it I get really flustered it's scary yeah but it's good like for me <coughs> pertaining to work I can deal with anything and I have this weird switch about me and I think I was taught in the academy I don't think they'd like mean to teach you this but because of how they train you that zero to 60 you know you have that calm mellow professionalism about you and then all of a sudden if something goes sour well then you can immediately address that situation so I'm fine with people you know at work and then if you start talking to me and it gets to a situation where I got I'm starting to go on that that different switch, I'm going to start like holding my hands a little bit more like this, you know, a little bit like professional. More guarded. Yes. Just, you know, if I'm laid back, you know, I I don't have my hand in my pocket, but I might have it kind of closed, just a relaxed feel, but then if I start feeling threatened or like the situation's going higher up, then um that's whenever I start that guarded Position. Where do you like hold your hands on your gun? <laughs> I did that one time though, not not like not like that though. I had my hand kind of like, but it's like a nice resting place. It is, and I had it like this one time, just on the gun, and somebody was like, "Don't shoot!" I'm like, 
Oh, I mean, you don't think about it does kind of look bad if you have your hand just on your gun. You know, I had it just there leaning. But it's like your center yeah, console. <laughs> I know. I was just leaning. But then I was like, oh, well, that, that doesn't look good. <laughs> so I stopped doing that unless I'm at your house or something, and then I'll do it. But I try not to. Yeah. But, um, all right. So we had an outline, right? Last time we had one, and we thought this was going to last the entire time, right? Mm-hmm. And it was like two or three po- talking points, and then all of a sudden we looked down at the clock, and I know you were you were thinking like, oh no, I mean I was, I was thinking, oh no, what are we going to talk about the rest of the time? Because it only lasted like twenty minutes, and then you know, out of How our what hour, time do you think it is? Have you looked at your watch? Lately? No, he's been uh, Danny's. Been oh, saying. you're updated then. Okay, yeah, I was just yeah, gonna say. So we've been on uh, doing this for forty minutes. So now we have twenty minutes. So. Um, this is my, like I said, this is my outline. I did this. I was trying to be a little more professional because I had a guy named Troy call me saying, Hey, you should talk, have a little bit, a few more outlines. So we've kind of talked about a lot of them. Oh, let's see if, um, I can get anybody to help me talk you into not buying a Chevy Camaro. Oh yeah. We were, see, I told you. We had to get on that. (laughs) All right. So that was one of those things that I told her today that I want to buy this rat, um, rapid blue Chevy Camaro and it is beautiful I want it really bad and I was thinking I could use it for my driving class that I do and I mean but I I don't actually want anybody to drive it other than myself but I could advertise for it and uh but I'm trying to be responsible and not buy something that I don't actually need so until I can find something that's a little less expensive but I mean what's wrong with a Chevy Camaro See, Dan well, thinks the, it's good. Well, I, I know, and I love ours, but it's just that. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> she has a Chevy Camaro, and she's trying to talk me out of it. Well, it's not that. <laughs> it's okay. If it was going to be my sole means of transportation, I couldn't do it. Just because, and I wouldn't think you could either, you well, know. It's, I mean, but it's it's not, you're getting it for fun, though. Yeah. So that's different. Because my patrol car is pretty much, like, I'm I work. I feel like I work more than I'm off. So my patrol car is the one that I drive all the time. And then the Camaro would be if I was going out of town and not with work. Yeah. So, I mean, I feel like it would have a better ride than a Jeep. A Jeep Wrang- I have a Jeep Wrangler right now that has three-inch lift. It's and just rocky. Yeah. Three-inch lift and the tires are 35s, I think. 35s and it looks great. I love it. it. Has bullet holes all over, fake bullet holes. But you want to hear something funny? My grandmother picked me up from the car rider line my whole life in elementary school and then through middle school. Mm-hmm. And she drove a Cadillac that had bullet holes in the back, not the stickers, nah. actual <laughs> bullet holes. She was just trying to be cool, <coughs> make sure everybody knew not to mess with her. Yeah. She was yeah. deaf, too, or is. And so my brother would yell things out the window at other people, like, as we were <laughs> driving down the road. That poor woman, she put up with so much. So I'm not even looking at the outline. Troy's going to call me and say, you should, you should have looked at the outline. But I just thought of something. So what is a habit of yours? And it could be like a little weird twerk. Is it twerk? I twirl my twerk. hair. Is, what's it twerk. called? It's, I don't it's twerk. know. It's, it's okay. Some a weird thing about you. So you curl your hair. I twirl it. Twirl I'm it. obsessed okay. with touching it, especially if it's like washed and straightened or freshly cut. I'm not touching anything else with this for 24 hours. It, I'm obsessed with like just you because you can you do it anywhere. Nervous or just want to self soothe anything. I'll just. I mean, I'll get cramps in my hands. I'll do it so long. Yeah, that's pretty bad. I have to fight not doing it right now. <laughs> Especially now that I mentioned it. So, I don't do it anymore, of course. Uh, but whenever I was younger, I used to, like, suck on my finger. I had a little blanket. And so, I would suck on, like, my index finger and have the blanket, like, wrapped around it. And then, yeah. I, it was probably until I was 10 that I did that. I know. It was pretty bad. Well, at least you broke yourself of it. Yeah, my grandmother used to put this, um, like, little nail, like, nasty nail polish stuff that it would, 
be nasty. And it, that mm-hmm. helped, so I stopped doing it. Yeah. But my brothers would make fun of me. And so the blanket was probably like this big. It was a baby blanket, right? I still have a little piece of it just in my, my little memory box. And I'm not one to keep stuff, but I have always kept that. I was working in Chicago and left my baby blanket on a plane in Atlanta. <laughs> still there, Southwest. <laughs> That's fine. Check your lost and found. There's a bear blanket. It has an attached pillow on it. So it was like a how, pop a nap anywhere. How long ago was that? Probably. I got it about. Well, it, I just liked having it because it was a pillow and a blanket. And I got it when my youngest was born. He's 15 now. So. But I lost it. Have you not tried Seven to, years ago. Like, find the same thing? I did. I've got you one. Fi- I've okay. got an alligator. I've, and it's a blanket. Like, yeah. it, it's a blanket, but it is also, like, a robe. It has two arm holes in it. Yeah, well, I'm just obsessed with walking around with blankets in the wintertime. And, and twirling your hair. <laughs> and twirling my hair. That's uh-huh. where you can find me. So, um, you know the straws? that you know, The little plastic. And it's not plastic. It's uh, the, the paper that goes over a straw, right? Yeah. Again, I don't think I'm OCD when it comes to stuff, but there's weird things about me that I have to do, right? So the straw, every time I take... <laughs> Please paper, tell me that you flatten it out. No, I, I know. <laughs> My okay. kids do. So I I ball it up, and and it's we I cannot throw it away for whatever reason. Like, <laughs> I, I try, and then I feel bad, and I, like, will still grab it, and I'll put it up in a little ball and then throw it away, and then... <laughs> I, w- I would like to get out of that because I feel like <laughs> there's something wrong with me because I cannot let it go. Um, I don't know why I do the same thing. Like, what do we owe these straw wrappers? <laughs> we don't want to let them go. Like, I flatten them all the way <laughs> and then I fold them in half and I fold them in half again and I make sure they're all symmetrical <laughs> that they can move all together. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> look, I did, I was not planning that to be that funny, but watching you, <laughs> it's just funny because you do it too. <laughs> Why can't we throw it away? We just like, I'll just stick it in my pocket. The flattened? Anything but letting anybody <laughs> see me throw it away. <laughs> That's probably the single most reason why I hate eating in public. <laughs> Wait, so you don't like eating in public? No. Why? Oh, my gosh. I'm tearing up here. There is a a video somewhere from the extravaganza of me eating. Like, I was tearing down on a funnel cake. If you see it, please just tell me so I can send them a personal message and ask them to take it down. I just looked up, and, I mean, it was, like, the freshest, biggest powdery bite. You had it all over. All over. And, I mean, just really trying to get that big bite in, you know? I don't like eating in public because, like, I never know if I go to these places if I've arrested those people that work <sighs> there. And then I worry, like, they're going to spit in my food. They're going to, like, oh, accidentally drop that. it. And um, I just, you know, I like to eat, so I just don't care about it. If it's a little spit in it, oh, well. <laughs> a little is, extra yeah, meaty. It's just, it is what it is. But I don't like it. It's because, like, if I go to any type of event, and I didn't eat before, and I got to eat there, then if I'm in uniform, people want to come up and talk to me, and they're like, oh, I've never seen a female, you know, in a uniform. And whatever. then you feel like you have to hold a conversation. So then I'm, like, almost about to eat something, and then I stop and talk to them, and then they tell me their stories about uh, how they got pulled over and <laughs> they got a ticket. It's a, it's the same. Oh, yeah. Like, I try to not tell people what I do for a living just because I know the stories that are going to and Sue, and um, but I never say anything negative to them. I just let them, li- you know, talk, and I listen. And I'm every time I try to talk, you know, get a bite, and then they'll ask me a question, and so I end up just not eating. So I now know if I ever go to an event in uniform, eat before. So I didn't know if that was something a reason why you don't like being out in public eating. Well, just because I don't want there to be a picture of me eating, but. My fans are the best. If they see me standing in line for food or anything, it's usually like, hey, come here. Come get in line real quick, you know. Oh, or they'll nice. bring me. The, somebody had brought me that funnel cake. 
Well, that's nice. Yeah, I love that. I, I'm very fortunate. So most people, um, I don't want to say most, but I've been very blessed. And it seems to be the st- whenever I need it the most, like I might be short on, you know, after I pay all my bills and all that and what I want to save and all that, I might be short on, uh, I really don't want to go out and spend, you cannot get a good meal for like less than $10 anymore. Yeah. But, you know, 10 to $20 you're going to spend on something, and then it just happens to be. But, again, I like to eat, so I'm going to go eat what I what I, yeah. what I want to eat. But uh, I go to these restaurants, and just happens to be the time that I'm like, I really shouldn't be spending this money. And then somebody says, hey, I, I took care of your, your food. It's just like, that. I love that. I yeah. love, because it's just one of those, like, God answered my call. Yeah. You know, it's my, God wink. Yeah. Uh, see, I like that phrase. God wink. Don't use the horse one. Don't do that anymore. Well, it doesn't have anything to do with the other. <laughs> Horse trading. It, well, it makes sense when I use it, though, for me. Just like me, I don't know how to use it. I phrases. just feel like things should be fair. Like, I know that, okay, if I'm willing to let somebody, like, you know, I could, we're going to give you free law. Le- 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 oh, my legal. gosh, spit it out. <laughs> if we're going to give free legal advice and you have land, however much you would lease that land for, if that's what you want to work out, you yeah. know, it's just like, I just believe in your word being good. Like, you know, you say you're going to do it, you do it. Yeah, I agree. Um, <clears throat> I try to do that with everything. And then my kids, though, like, they'll hold me to it, though. Oh, yeah. So with them, however, because they know how to give me, right? I'll be talking to somebody, like, important doing business or whatever, and they don't want to talk to you until you're on the phone, you know? Like, Mm -hmm. as soon as you're on the phone, all of a sudden, all four of my kids want to come by and start talking. But then, while I'm on the phone with somebody, then all of a sudden, they're like, hey, can we go get a pony? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Like, I hate to do that, but I'm, like, trying to, you know, do something important with work or with the business or whatever it might be, and they know that. My (laughs) kids know, like, if my eyes get big around like that and... Mm -hmm. The only time it's, like, if they don't know I'm on the phone, if I have on headphones or something. But, like, when I was talking to you yeah, yesterday, I think. But the kids didn't talk to me all day long. All summer, they're just eating me out of house and home. Yeah. Until the phone's on my ear. They went back to school? Yes. They started back this morning. And it's my daughter's birthday. Oh, well, happy birthday. Yeah. Got a preteen. Yeah. How old is she now? Twelve. Twelve, okay. So, we've been on, how, how long have we been on? I know it's been 50 minutes. 53. 53 minutes. Wow. I know. Time flies when you're having fun. It is. I got that phrase right. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I'm just going to have to learn to do more phrases. But, yeah, this has been a great one. I feel like we have been a lot more successful than last time pertaining to keeping with somewhat of an outline. Oh, um, this is my outline. So I did want to talk about campaign season. So it is the election coming up, and... I, we are not going to talk politics per se as far as, like, what we view and our political thoughts and all that because Sippy Girls is just about to an organization to get outside. It's not about any political or, you know, affiliation with any third party. It's just the reason I mention that is because do your dual diligence. Your due diligence. Due diligence. And uh, go out and vote. And yeah. that's all I had to really say about that. Well, and I'll add this, too, because I went to Grip and Grin yesterday yeah. at Mama Hamill's and got to listen to a lot of the people running for office. And I'm not going to mention a lot of politics either, but I will say this. There was a guy there that was speaking on behalf of somebody else, which is a whole other topic on its own. But he did speak the entire way and continued speaking, even though he was booed the entire time. Mm. And... He continued to stand by the elected official that he was representing. And it was just nice to see that, regardless, he wanted to make sure he got his point across. And uh, I'll just add that to make sure you do your due diligence. Get out there and listen to the people in your area and vote or don't complain. Right. And, I mean, if you have an issue in your area, then that's why you need to go know your representatives and your senators and any elected official because that's what they're there for is to help you out. Yeah. So go vote, go get to know them. If you have an issue, let them know because that's what they're there for. They need to know in order to fix it. 
But um, if you guys have men- liked watching our show or listening to us, then you can continue to follow us. You know, we're on Apple Podcast. Oh, she's now. Go follow and rate Sippy Girls Podcast by searching Sippy Girls Podcast on your favorite podcast app. Or um, follow Ashley Jones, Ashley Dead Eye Jones on Facebook, Ivana Williams. And I also have Ivana Williams Armory. So whichever one you want to follow. And we'll link all that to the TikTok and to Facebook and all that once we upload the podcast. But we are excited to continue this process and see where it goes and if you guys have any questions for us, then we'll be happy to answer it. Yeah, and we'd like to do uh, live. We'll schedule a live for a question and answers. But if y'all have any questions y'all want to see answered, be sure to send them to us. All right. Thanks. <laughs>